Yeah, done. Okay, so uh, today we're going to discuss uh, chapter six. Uh, by the way, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah. Testing, testing. Can you guys hear me? Yes, can. Yes, doctor. Okay, okay, good. So I, I think uh, it was some issue with my internet connection just now. Okay. Right, so, uh, and can you guys see my screen? Yeah. No problem? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so, yeah. Sorry, just now uh, it was... It was some issue with my internet connection just now. Okay, so I think uh, we can start our lecture now. So everything should be okay, right? So, um, right. So uh, today's will be our last lecture in a way. Um, so today we're going to discuss our last one. So chapter six. So chapter six will be about uh, this thing, uh, this topic, so called the generating functions. Okay. Okay, uh, here we're going to discuss uh, three types of the generating functions. Okay, so the first type will be so-called the characteristic functions. Okay, so uh, most we, we just simply uh, use a shorthand, uh, CF for it. And the second one, so will be moment. generating functions. So we're going to use the shorthand uh, MGF. So, and the last one will be the probability generating functions. Uh, so we're going to use the shorthand uh, PGF to represent it. Well, uh, I believe you guys have already seen this, uh, the second one, the moment generating function, if you have uh, attended uh, one or two undergraduate courses for proper, uh, probability and statistics or distribution theory, you should have already uh, seen this before, moment generating functions. Okay. So, however, uh, in our lectures here, uh, we are actually mainly focused to this characteristic functions and also to this one, okay? Okay, so this is uh, first, uh, this is the, the topic that we're going to dis discuss in this lecture. And next, um, what are the applications for these three types of generating functions? What can we do if we have uh, this uh, kind of concept in the probability phase? Okay, uh, basically, we can use it to solve this card problem. So, for example, what we can do is let's say uh, we have a random variable x and y. Supposing we have two random, or maybe it could be uh, up to n of them, x, y, z, and so on. Uh, we have given two random variables x and y. So 
And then if you want to know the distributions for the new random model x plus y. So what is so if we know the distribution for x and if we know the distribution for y, so um, then we might want to know what is the distribution for the new random variable x plus y. Okay. So yeah, of course, uh, we do have several uh, methods to uh, to solve this problem or identify the distribution for x plus y. Uh, for example, uh, we, one of the most direct methods will be using the distributions, uh, sorry, the definitions for distribution. So we can directly uh, use uh, use the definitions to compute the distribution for x plus y. So however, uh, in the case when x and y are independent, it will be very convenient to use uh, this kind of generating functions to do it. Yeah? So, and also we can also have this kind of scenario. So supposing we have, um, uh, uh, as usual, we have a sequence of uh, random number x1, x2, x3, and so on. So I think we have uh, studied this kind of uh, problem in our previous lecture. So same thing. So if we have a sequence of random numbers, then we might want to know um, what is the distribution for the limiting uh, limiting distribution for this sequence of random variables. Okay, so uh, one of the very useful application for this generating function. So is uh, we can provide a very uh, standard way or easy way to identify the distribution for this uh, lim x at. Okay, so this is it. and also. Another one, so in here, so this is actually one of the application for it. So we use it to prove our central limit theorems. Okay. So uh, the topic that we have, uh, one, one of the main formulas that we have discussed in chapter five. So I think I did mention it. So we're going to delay the proof for these theorems. So because we can actually prove this theorem in a relatively easy manner by using uh, these characteristic functions. Okay, uh, in fact, one one of them. Sorry. So this is, and also uh, I think this is a topic that uh, we didn't discuss over here. So actually, we can also use it to analyze uh, data. So for example, we can uh, do some analysis on mean, variance, and the scaleness for certain data, but uh, uh, we are not studying this uh, in, in today's lecture or in our course over here. Ah, so this is the one. Okay, okay. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, what we're going to do for today's lecture is, uh, first of all, uh, we just study some properties. Or maybe we shall say formula is we want up to use. Uh, we study some properties, uh, useful properties or formulas of these uh, characteristic functions. Many characteristic functions, but we also list it a uh, moment generating function or proper pretty generating functions. Okay. And then after that, we see, look at the application for all these formula. So uh, my application is uh, going through examples. Okay. So as an example, we see how to apply this formula to solve certain problems. So many will be the, the, the thing that I have mentioned here. Okay. So uh, roughly, um, this is a short, very short chapter. So I believe uh, Today we should be able to finish uh, to discuss uh, the whole thing for this lecture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, as before, so I have actually prepared uh, some kind of the you you may say supplement or summary for this chapter six. So uh, uh, in fact, I have already uploaded to the team or the spectrum. So uh, you may go and download it. Huh? So okay. So. 
the, the far, the metal to the far in spectrum or in tin. Yeah? Okay, so uh, okay. Uh, my today's lecture will be the, the the order of my discussion uh, will be slightly different from the lecture notes. Okay, so in a way, I will actually uh, combine uh, these three type of the generating function together. So I will sort of like I will just look at these three concept at the same times okay and, and instead of uh, looking by them one by one because uh, they are actually quite similar and they do share the similar properties however there's a, some slight difference between them however they share the same almost uh, similar properties so that's why we can actually uh, combine these three concepts and discuss and look at their formula so that uh, you guys can have a can can have a better picture or you can compare uh, what are their difference and what are their similarity okay okay so um so again um i'm not going to look at the proof for all those formula but i would mainly focus on um, how to apply how to apply those formula to solve uh, those questions that i mentioned just now okay Okay, uh, let's start out with the definitions, or you may say the formula for these three generating functions, CF and GF and uh, PGF. Okay, so we have three types of them. Okay, so CF, the characteristic function. Okay, well, maybe I saw this. Huh? Okay, let's start it. So let's say, we have a random variable x. Okay, so we can define a new function respect corresponding to this random variable. So so called is CF and GF and PF. Okay, so the first one will be the characteristic functions. Okay, you may say this is the the definition for characteristic function will be like this. All right. So okay. So Okay, so in our lectures here, so I'm going to use this symbol. Vxt, okay. So which is actually a function on a real scalar t. So Vxt uh, depends on. So which is just equals to E of the expectation value for this. Etx. Uh, e i e i t x okay so here this i as usual will be the complex number uh square of minus one so which means you're going to have a if you take the square of i will be minus one so this is the imaginary uh, component for the complex number so this is the definitions for characteristic function just uh, the we look at the expectation value for this new complex value random variable e i t x okay okay so uh what we can do is we can uh, rewrite these expressions like this Maybe I'll put it here so this is a e i t x right so we in fact we can actually express this as e i t and after that this whole thing, uh, power with x. Okay, so just a simple uh, calculus thing. So e i t x is actually just e i t power of x. Okay? We can express this characteristic function in this way. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Mm. Okay, so the second one will be the moment generating functions. Okay, so uh, in okay uh, in my lecture notes, I take this symbol. Okay, 
Okay, so again, so this is a function in terms of a uh, scalar field T, so by the definition, so which is given by this E T X. Okay. So you, you can compare, uh, this is quite similar to this, but uh, just without the I over here. So again, so that's why, so this one, we can actually express it as this E T. So you can see it's uh, follow the similar pattern. So it's just that uh, this is a complex number, EIT. So this is a real number, ET. Okay. So power of X. So and the last one. So we so call the probability generating functions. Okay, so here I use the symbol theta. Okay, so theta x z. So which is equals to e of z power of x. So again, uh, so this is exactly like that. So that means this one. So to be consistent, so that means this can be written as uh, we have a quantity z and then power of x. So here's uh, the definition for these three concepts, the characteristic functions, the moment generating functions, as well as the probability generating function, just like that. So uh, here I'm going to use uh, this three symbol, uh, phi x, sin x, and theta x to represent these three functions. Uh, just to let you know, um, for this, right, maybe I where should I put? Okay. Um, Okay, maybe I will put it over here, up here. I think it, just a remark for you guys. So uh, in most of the textbooks or literature, okay. So uh, in most of this, right? So it's uh, they use uh, MXT instead of Sine xt for mg. So I think this is the most common uh, common one, uh, mxt. Yeah? So, but here I'm following. I I follow the uh, one the, the textbook. So I uh, my the, the textbook using this sign. So I just follow the symbol here. Okay. But however, uh, they they are actually talking about the same thing. So they are both referring to the moment generating functions, right? Okay, so here's uh, the definitions for these three types of generating functions. So you can see that's a slight difference. The only difference will be the quantity inside the bracket. Okay, for this will be E I T. So this is E T. So this is a uh, Z like T. Yeah? Okay, so uh, what are the different or uh, what are the pro and co for these three types of generating functions? So let's look at it one by one uh, before we start go to the detail for it. Okay, first of all, I think if you look at here, then it's clear. So this is an I, so this is a complex, uh, the, the imaginary number, square of negative I. So therefore, one of the main uh, characteristic for this characteristic function is this one, it's the more complex number. Okay, which is uh, slightly unusual. So which means uh, you need to uh, apply some kind of the knowledge of complex number if you want to uh, uh, making use of these characteristic functions. Yeah. So that is the first characteristic for this. So however, for this uh, MGF, so as you can see the difference over here, so the only difference will be, so this one, EMOF, uh, only, real numbers okay okay so i think maybe uh you guys are more comfortable with the second one 
rather than the first one because uh, most of the people, including me, are, are not quite familiar with complex number. So that's why, uh, in a way, if we using this a moment generating function, we will feel more comfortable okay, because of it's only involved real number, but and without complex number. Okay, so this is a difference over here. So for this uh, probability generating function, what's the difference? Okay, the only difference will be this z. So in here, just to uh, important here, this z is uh, represent integer. Okay. Is an integer okay uh, this is very important uh, so i think better take notes for it here this z is integer so which means you only consider one two three four and so on so therefore that means this one involve only integer So this is the first thing that we can observe from our definitions over here. Okay, so the first one involve complex numbers, involve real numbers. So this one involve only uh, integer. Sorry. Okay. So then these are the first the different that we can sense. Okay. So that's why. Uh, Then you can see, uh, so in a way, so this is uh, the simplest, right? In a way, this is the simplest because of uh, you only need to deal with integer. So one, two, three, four, five, six on it. So in a way, the pattern or the form will be the simplest one, okay? So this one will be comparatively also simple because as you can see here, it's involved only real number. So when we come to here, so this one a bit uh, more complicated, right? Because uh, it's uh, involved complex number. So before applying this, so we, we need to apply some extra knowledge, which is the knowledge of complex number. Okay? So this is the simplest one. So this is simple. So this is uh, the more complicated uh, the form. Okay, depends on the behavior for this. Okay? Then you might ask here, so since this is the simplest one, so this is very complicated. So why we want to define this? Why don't we just look at this one? Okay. So that is a pro and call over here. Uh, as you as I said, here's it's only involved in the year. So which means for this, right? So this one only applicable for discrete. Random variable only. Okay, so this one you can only apply for discrete random variables only. So which means for distribution like a uh, normal distribution, you can't use proper uh, probability generating function. So that means there is no proper. Uh, there's no PGF for normal distribution there's no pgf for chi square distribution all right so that's only when you deal with boson binomial yes then you can apply this a pgf right okay take note for this so this is only applicable for the discrete case only whereas so this one you can apply it for both discrete as well as the continuous case same as this you may apply this to both discrete and continuous case. So which means it regardless it's a normal distribution, binomial distributions, or whatever. So you can use, you can compute its characteristic functions. Okay. So that is uh, maybe as you can see here, the uh, at one ditch for these two compared to this. So okay, uh, take notes for it. And finally, then you might wondering, uh, since uh, for this moment generating function, we it is applicable to both comp uh, uh, continuous and discrete case. This is 
the script continues that. So why don't we just opt for this? Okay, why don't we just uh, opt for this and forget about that? So why we are so bothered to learn something new thing, characteristic function? Okay, the reason will be here. So this is the main reason why we want to consider this uh, characteristic function. So this is because of these things always exit. Okay. Okay. For all the random variables, so which means for all random variables, you can always compute its characteristic function for all kind of the random variable, theoretically. Okay. Of course, uh, in practical, sometimes it could be quite uh difficult to identify its uh what do you call it the uh, good expressions however theoretically they always exit for all kind of the random variable okay so that means uh, no restrictions once i give you one random variable so you can always compute its characteristic function theoretically okay uh, Although in um, practical, we might not able to identify the pattern of the expressions. Okay, however, theoretically, it's always exit. So how about this one? Uh, the issue with this uh, moment generating function is it is not always exit. Okay, not always exit for this one. So an example will be this. So for example, you can see it. So for example, so we can see, uh, I think it's a well-known one, the T distributions. I think maybe. For T distributions, as well as uh, the F distributions. Okay, so the uh, moment generating function do not exit, not do. Okay. Okay, so okay, so maybe just switch the two to another. Just let you have a look. Uh, so I think you you can see my screen, right? <laughs> another screen, huh? So, okay, so this is the what what this is the formula distribution formula that I, I have actually shared in the spectrum. Okay, so you can get it. So just for example, okay, so this is a F distributions, right? Uh, for F distribution, so as you can see, where is it? Ah, uh, okay, so MT does not exit. So as I said, so for some distribute, uh, for some random number, so you might not able to compute the uh, moment generating function. It does not exit, okay? Uh, so likewise, okay, so for gamma, we do have the moment generated functions. Others? Any? Okay, I think this one, uh, Pareto, ah, okay, yeah. Like, this is another example, this uh, Pareto distribution, MT does not exist, okay? Uh, right, okay. So uh, again, uh, you can you may always refer back to this part, the formula distribution, which uh, I have already shared in the uh, spectrums. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's go back to our whiteboard. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay, so it's like just now we have seen right in the formula, the MGF for F distribution do not exit, that does not exit. Okay. 
right so here at least you can see the difference between uh, among these three types of the generating function and the pro and call for these three types of the um, generating functions right so let's have a quick look again okay uh here's are the definitions so for cf will be eit so for mg will be et okay and for pgf will be z money so the difference will be here uh, this one it's involved complex number so this one involves real numbers on it so this one involves uh, integers on it okay so that means so which means um when you deal with discrete random marble, yeah, I think maybe you may use uh, this uh, probability generating function to do it, okay? Uh, so the only difference will be this one always exists, this one might not be exists, okay? So uh, however, these two are applicable for both discrete and continuous case, okay? Okay, before we continue, just come back to the definition once again. Okay, so uh, okay, so now you can see a difference. So only different will be the the the, the what you call it. Okay, anyway, the, the function involved here will be different away. So that's why you can see the difference here, right? So that's why based on here. If you know one of them, so you should be able to identify the formula for the other two for the same distributions. Okay, so what you need to do is you just need to change this component uh, uh, accordingly. So maybe uh, let's look at this. Okay, uh, you may refer to the the last page for the lecture notes, okay. Yeah, you may refer to the last page for the lecture notes or page two of the appendix. So we just look at here. Okay, so these three. So just do it one by one. So let's say we look at binomial. Yeah, okay, maybe I'll put it over here. So fine. Okay, we will go back to the, the uh, derivation of those um, formula later so let's look at it huh? so this is a uh, my t x so the e of so uh, e i t okay so the next one will be x t Okay, so this is uh, E T, so this is Z. Okay, so here's the formula, right? Okay, uh, let's look at it one by one. So I just write down the first one, and then you guys try to guess the next two. Okay, so for the first one, so supposing uh, if we look at binomial, so let's say uh, X is a binomial distribution uh, with entra and with uh, probability of success P. Okay, so for this, so I just give you the first one. So the formula for the characteristic function is P E I T plus Q power of N. 
Okay, so make a guess. Don't look at the answer first. What are the formula for the MGF and PGF for binomial function? If you look at these patterns, okay, and then you make a guess based on the definitions. Okay, so I carry on with the next one. You guys think about it first. So for geometry. So the formula is P one minus Q by T by T. So if we have a boson, so the mean lambda, so the characteristic functions is given by E lambda. Okay, so these are the discrete case. So let's. Okay, I think maybe before that, uh, before we look at the. Okay, just one more since I time. So big space here. Okay, so maybe just look at one of them. So let's say if your X is a normal distribution, mean, mu, and the variance, sigma square. Well, uh, the. To call it uh, the uh, characteristic correct characteristic function is given by e two mute i t that's, uh, minus sigma square t square over two. Okay, I think this one a bit. Difficult. Okay. Right. So, uh, the other one, gamma. Let's leave it first. So let's look at uh, this four them. Okay. So I give you uh, just maybe one minute, two minutes, to, so you guys can think about it first. What are the answer for here? For for the other two. Okay, so maybe let's see the answer. Okay, so you look at the formulas here. So this is a e i t e t n. Okay, so fill in the blank here. So what you should fill in here, same as this, I'm going to P. Again, fill in the blank. What should you fill in in the highlighted part here? Likewise for this. Okay, so let's look at the answer. So uh, based on the formula or definition above, so you can easily, once I give you characteristic function, you can base on a pattern and guess the formula for the other two. Huh? Okay. So this is a EIT, so then this is EIT, but here you replace the EIT with uh, a ET, so that's why, so here should be ET. So likewise, so this is an EIT, right? So this is an EIT, so it should be ET replaced by, so EIT will become ET. So this is ET, just like that. Okay, how about this? So you just need to replace the ET or EIT with Z. So that's why the answer will be PZ. 
and uh, all right so just like that okay so i hope you can get a pattern huh? right so let's carry on with the other okay i think the normal is a little bit uh, complicated before that uh, we look at gamma so let's say if you have a gamma so alpha lambda okay using this so the uh, characteristic function is given by lambda lambda minus i t and then power of alpha yeah of course uh, again uh, these two are continuous right so that's why there's no property generating function for uh, these two okay right so let's look at it uh make a guess what is the answer over here so i think this is a bit difficult so come back to it so the only difference will be here you guys may take a look this uh, this is a it right so this is a t so what you need to do is you just need to replace it to t got it it to t yeah huh? okay so uh I, I think gamma is much more easy so this is it so what you need to do is you just need to replace it with t so that's why you need to identify where we where, where you have the it you replace with t so i think i think it's uh, quite straightforward this is it so what do you need to do is you just need to replace it with t so i think it's uh, easy for this okay so it to t but uh, this will be slightly complicated so over here so before that so you look at here so t square so it right so let's say if you you have to look at here i think maybe i put it over here the calculations so i t square is equals to i square t square so that's why it to be minus t square okay so please take note for this okay so that's why minus t square is actually uh sorry so this um, the whole things i t square so therefore this part right i'm running out of space so maybe i put it over here so this fella you sh it should be two mu i t minus or plus sigma square i t power of two okay so because of a minus t square in, in, in fact you have to put an it there so there's an it power of two so that's why it should be it so now we just need to look at this is that pattern here so that's why when you come to this uh, moment generating function so it will be e power of two mute t minus will end up becomes plus sigma square t square then over two okay just like that But anyway, uh, since for this semester, so uh, the final examination is actually an open book examination. So you guys can always refer to the uh, formula that I have give has been that's have been given to you guys. Yeah, so you don't have to worry about the formula. Yeah. But anyway, uh, that's if you want to save your time to memorize the formula so that's the way to memorize the uh, formula okay a bit. okay so this is uh okay, okay so maybe uh next i will just briefly go to uh some simple calculations okay so just to 
going through those uh, simple cal uh, calculation just to explain to you how to get all this formula. So maybe I will just look at uh, this. Uh, so maybe I will just uh, show you how to get this, the uh, characteristic function for binomial, uh, again, maybe for boson, yeah. So as well as, uh, I think normal, I think this one, this one, okay, how to get this gamma, the characteristic function for gamma distribution, boson distributions and normal, no, not normal, and binomial distributions, yeah. So by going through all this, the calculation for these three formula, uh, then at the same time to demonstrate to you guys how to apply certain well-known formula. Okay. Okay. So let's look at it. Huh? So first example, uh, in fact, it's a proof for our formula. Okay. So first example, huh? Sure, it's an example. Okay, maybe the proof now. Okay, so proof of CF for binomial. Okay, All right. So before we continue, just to recall this. Okay, maybe I'll put it over here. So before that, just recall. So recall. Uh, for binomial distributions, so the uh, what you call it, the, 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 the mass function will be given like that uh, NCK, uh, PK, QNK. Okay, so this is the and also the characteristic functions is given by this formula. Huh? So as above, I'm using phi, right? Yeah, phi. So phi x t is equal to e of E I T X, right? So basically, we just need to apply these two formula to to to, to derive it. Okay, so having uh, these two formula in mind, then we can do our computations. So, V X T according to the definition will be E I T X. Okay. Mm, okay. Next, um, by the Definitions. So this will be the sign. So k equal zero. Uh, e i t. Okay. Uh, you can just need to replace this, right? So um, I'm using k here instead of x. So that's k. And then uh, p of x equals to k. So then I just need to substitute this formula inside. So it ends up to be. I have a E I T K uh, N C K P K. This. Okay, uh, next, uh, this thing is a uh, power of K. This is power of K, right? So, what I need to do is I just need to combine these two terms, okay? E I T power of K, P power of K together. So, So I can shift this one over. So NCK. So these two, both of these two terms, EIT and P, are both power of K. So we can actually combining them. So become PEIT power of K and Q and minus K. So you look at our pattern here. Okay, next, uh, you need to recall one formula from calculus. So this is so called the binomial formula okay so uh what is this binomial formula so it said that uh if you have two scalar a plus b power of n so which is just equal to uh, n is an integer of course uh summating k running from zero to n uh, n c k a k b power of n minus k so you can see it follow the pattern here. So which means uh, this will be your A, this will be your B, okay, in our formula here. So we can straight away, and this one using uh, our binomial formula, so it end up to be P 
PEIT plus Q power of N. Okay, so that's actually equals to A plus B power of N. If you replace the symbols over here. Okay, so done. This is the formula. Right, so I think this is the main reason to to look at a proof of it. Okay, the reason is I hope going through this example so that you can remember this formula. Okay, so called the binomial formula. Okay, okay, I don't want to mess it up. Just put it like that. This is a binomial formula. Okay, by going through this example to give you a remi reminder re this formula okay so this is the first examples okay, or the first proof for our formula so likewise you can actually prove the formula for the moment generating function as well as the probability generating function so what you need to do is you, you just need to replace your eit with et or z so maybe just give you a remarks here. Okay, so you can do the similar calculations as a per. So the only thing that you need to do is you just need to uh, replace the EIT a per here with ET for MGF and replaces EIT with Z for the proof of PGF. Okay, so you may go and do it on yourself as an exercise. Okay. Okay, so I'm not going to show you. So what you need to do is just need to follow the above calculation and do it on yourself. Okay, right. Okay, so next one more formula. So let's look at the proof for the characteristic functions of Poisson distributions uh, with uh, mean. Lambda, right? So again, uh, what you need to do is just need to recall the formula. So when X is a Poisson distribution, so the mass mass function is given by E minus lambda, lambda k, and k factorial. And also, I think this one, I, I I hope okay. So this one is equal to e of e i t x. I just need to notice. Yeah. Okay? okay. So using these two formula, then you can do the calculations. So my x t is just equal to uh, e of e i t x. So plug in the form. Uh, again the formula. Okay. So. So the only difference with the previous one is uh, the domain for this one is, how should I say? So the domain is actually running from all the non-negative integer. Yeah. So that's why, because of the domains here. So then this will be, we are summating k running from zero up to infinity. E i t k p x. This k, the uh, mass functions. So by plug in this formula inside, so that we have this. Okay. 
Okay, so uh, similar idea. You look at this EIT and lambda, both uh, power with K, right? So in this case, so we can actually combine uh, these two terms together. So that is equals to, so I think, right, um, one by one. Okay, so again, uh, if you look at this, uh, these terms there's no k so it is independence of k so we can actually take it out so then e minus lambda and then we submitting this k factorial Okay, so here is it. Okay, so next, uh, just to recall another formula. So the this is actually the definition for exponential functions, huh? E of this. Okay. So the definition of exponential function. So you taking summating of any numbers here. So this is uh, sorry, not 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 this. Uh, you taking the summations k running from zero to infinity for any number power of k over k factorial. So this is actually e power of that uh, quantity. Okay, so this is uh, another well-known formula or the definition for or, or well-known definition. So okay, so now you can see. Uh, we have uh, this quantity lambda uh, eit so that's why we get a formula using the formula and we get this e minus lambda then e lambda eit okay so that is the proof for our answer Okay, so again, uh, one of the reasons that I pick the proof for this formula is I want to take this um, opportunity to have a revision with you guys, just to remind you guys we have this formula or this definition or the definition for uh, exponential functions. Okay. So next, um, I just look at one continuous case, okay? So the proof for the characteristic function of gamma distributions. Okay. All right, uh, I just noticed the formula used here is uh, different from this uh, different from the table given in the spectrum then. so okay so uh what's the difference is what you need to do is uh, they are, they are actually the same, but I'm using the, the other parameter. So what is it? It's just that you just need to change uh, lambda is 1 over beta okay. in that formula. Okay. Uh, so you just need to replace lambda with 1 over beta. Then you will get back to the uh, same sort of the uh, formula. Okay. Okay, so just a remark uh, uh, for the formula here. Okay, so again, uh, let's recall the formula for uh, gamma distribution with these two parameters. So just to recall this. Okay. 
uh, for gamma distribution. So the uh, mass function, no, not mass function, uh, the, the density function for gamma distribution is given like this. So which is equals to uh, lambda power of alpha e power of Uh, x, I'm using x here, minus minus uh, x alpha minus 1 power of alpha minus e minus lambda x, d1 divided by d gamma functions. Okay, uh, uh, actually I'm more towards inclined to express a formula this way. So uh, actually, I, I love to, this is a much better way for to me to express the thing. So this one is uh, combining this lambda x alpha minus 1 e minus lambda x divided by this. Okay, so this is a power of alpha, this power of alpha minus 1 for lambda. So actually, I'm going to have a one lambda over here. Okay. So no reason, to, just to let you know that's the pattern here. Yeah. Okay, so later on you, you see this. Just look at this part. Okay. All right, now we can do our calculation now. Huh? Okay. So follow the formula, uh, find xt is equals to e of e i t x. Yes, yeah, so this is it. So uh, this is a continuous case. So therefore, it is actually uh, integrating. Okay, uh, again, for this um, gamma distributions, so the domain for x is from 0 to infinity. So that's why we just need to liquidate from 0 to infinity for this uh, e i t x and then our uh, f x x e x. Okay. So by, by looking at uh, this formula, so we, we can have these things. So this can be written as so e i t x. So just plug in um, this formula inside or this formula. So there's lambda alpha. So here is it. Okay, so uh, the next step is here. So we look at these two terms. So this is a uh, e power of negative lambda. So this is a uh, e power of uh, it. And both of these terms, they are actually power of x here and also uh, we can actually combine uh, these two together so um, maybe I, I should give you another formula so that you can see the better pattern so which is actually follow the patterns over here so you just need to recall this okay so if you do the integrations of any things, okay, so for any number, power of alpha, okay, and uh, x, uh, any, any scalar, and x power of alpha minus 1, and then the e negative of this quantity x dx, and then divided by gamma of alpha, yeah. So this will be equals to 1. So you just need to uh, remember this so this is actually the definition for uh, gamma function okay so you just need to uh, identify the scalar here right so if you look at this so that means you you need to identify a scalar as well so that's the reason why i'm talking about this uh, e i t x and e minus lambda x huh? Okay, so I, I try to write uh, this integral in this standard form here. 
So then this will become like this. Um, maybe not really. Okay. Okay, so yeah. So uh, lambda, I. Okay, again, uh, first of all, this uh, lambda alpha is independent of x, so I can actually take it out. Okay, so then I can take out the lambda alpha. Okay, next, um, I just have this x, this. Okay. Sorry, um, I leave some space. Okay, so then uh, this one has been taken out. So then I am going to have this uh, x alpha minus one divided by uh, gamma of alpha. So I need more space, I believe. So we go here. Okay, next uh, after combine uh, com combining this uh, e i t x with uh, e minus lambda x, so then we, we can put it over here. So that's e minus of lambda minus i t x. Okay, so uh, it's very close, really. So uh, let's look at this formula here. Uh, we, we have a similar pattern over here. Okay. So um, then, then we have a thing, a so lambda minus it. So what we need to do, we must have some terms here. Okay. However, there's this term missing over here. So what we need to do is we can artificially add in the terms there. So we can add in these terms. So let's say the and this lambda minus i t. Uh, we need a power of alpha. So of alpha. Uh, however, we, we cannot just simply uh, add a one terms here. We have to be balanced up. So how to make it balanced? So what we can do is we can just multiply. This is one over this or divided by this. Uh, then it balance, right? Because uh, we, we cannot simply add terms here. So then this and this can be cancelled off. Then we will go back to the original uh, form. Right. Uh, now we look at here. So this uh, this is actually now in this patterns already. So that means the bracket here will be lambda minus it, lambda minus it. Okay, this follow here. Then we can see uh, this whole terms will be equals to what? Then using that formula, then this will be equals to lambda alpha with this over okay maybe let's follow it so that you can see the picture clearly so multiplying with one yeah okay then now we can simplify it so this is how we can get this formula Right. Mm. So again, uh, the reason that I picked this uh, calculation is just to give you an opportunity to see, to remind you about this formula. Yeah. So this uh, we have this formula. So this is actually the definition for gamma functions. Yeah. Uh, so you can have uh, any scalar here, either complex or real. So then this will be equals to one. Okay, please remember uh, this formula. Okay, likewise, you can do the thing for yourself. Verify. So
So using the same calculation, uh, you may able to verify this for x uh, normal distributions. So then the uh, find x t is equals to e of two mu i t minus sigma square t square over two. So you may verify it. So uh, if, if you want a more general pattern, so that is actually equals to equals to e two mu i t plus sigma square i t square. Okay. So however, uh, because we know uh, i square is minus one, so that's why we replace it with uh, minus one. Yeah. So similarly, you may verify this thing. So uh, what you need to do is just need to remember this. Just need to remember this, uh, this formula. Mm. Yeah, I think this is the one, uh, sigma over two pi negative will be infinity for this uh, e minus one over two x minus square dx is one okay so here could be anything you could put anything here okay you just need to put it anything here it doesn't matter oh sorry this is not no this one's supposed to be sigma you may fill up any numbers, uh, any any scale, uh, any quantity here. So you will be one. So provided this is. Yeah. So good. Now, okay, so just to demonstrate some calculation with you guys. Okay, now let's look at the formula. Okay, so uh, next, just look at uh, our formulas here. So this is actually, uh, you can look at the file. Uh, so Okay, so so this is uh you can look at the far uh, the chart. Okay, so the supplement for chapter six on huh, the first page so i just uh, gather uh, all the important 
formula so here so that you can have a look at the picture here right so let's go to it one by one Okay, uh, the first one, uh, we have already discussed this. So this is actually the definition for the characteristic function. Uh, Vx is given by that, uh, just for your information. So if you want to know the numbering in the lecture, so this is actually the definition 6.1.1, okay? Uh, so likewise, so then we have this, so. Oh. Okay, sorry, forget about the numbering. So another definition, the moment generating function, okay, uh, sine x, e, e t x. Okay. Again, for your information, so this is uh, the numbering in the lecture definition, 6.3.1. Okay. Uh, so this is actually in section three, yeah? so, uh, but I bring it in front here. So next, oh, 